Well, I fell for it. I'm out this morning looking for the remains, if there are any, the ruins of the old castle here in Venezia in Ukraine. From a distance, can you imagine? You know, it had been you and uh, bleary eyed in the morning, stumble out of bed, walking around looking for castle ruins. And off in the distance, through the trees, yeah, it turns out to be a modern mock up. Just a fancy looking restaurant. Easy mistake to make. So the search for the castle goes on. But I got an idea where it is, ish, I think. Okay, the first attempt didn't work out well. Here we are, I've come down the hill from the hotel. I've reached the River Boo, one of its many bridges. And as I walk across, I see this big flagpole with the Ukrainian flag, something I've been able to see from my balcony and window in the hotel, actually. I didn't realise it was across the river. Oh, hello. I was going to say right on cue, but not really, because I wasn't talking about the possibility of riverboat cruises, but I'll take it anyway. There we are. That could be the very same boat we saw a jetty for the other day in the previous video. Is it two or three videos ago? What we've got here is... <laughs> it's just as well that somebody kindly has put this thing up. Piece of perspex with an impression of what the castle used to look like. And I suppose, if you can really use your imagination, you could picture it right there, up on the top of Castle Hill. Zamkova Gora. I've not seen it done this way before, but actually I do very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Venezia, for doing this. Because it, it's a whole lot better than just looking at a blank bald hill trying to imagine okay well if there's a name castle hill but no castle we've got to accept there was a castle here but what did it look like oh we know there was a little church inside and it appears from this as though there were five towers it beats an armenian restaurant doesn't it Unless, of course, you're extremely hungry, in which case the Armenian restaurant wins hands down. Welcome to the walkie-talkie nonsense traveller. No, no, wait a minute. Welcome to the walkie-talkie traveller channel. That's it. I'll get the hang of it in the end. Little bit of a hillock to climb up there. And I was wondering why they would have the castle on this side of the river when the high ground appeared to me to be over there. The advantage is also, I guess, you're that much closer to the water, whereas to get a bit of high ground on that side of the river, it's quite a steep climb, you know. I can't say I'm looking forward to that. On the other hand, I don't need to go back exactly the same way, do I? And I don't think I will. Because I think just naturally my work today is going to take me to a very probably unobvious place. I haven't planned anything other than let's have a look, see if we can find these castle ruins, if there are any. And also on this side of the river, close to the castle, as you might expect, as I mentioned the other day, the Starry Misto, the old town was located 
originally on this side of the river as well. And while there's precious little or nothing of that left either, there was a Jewish community here that's often close to the castle because it's seen as, was seen historically in medieval times as potentially a source of protection. It didn't always work out that way, of course. But in theory, as the ruler of the land had invited the Jewish people to come and help populate uh, his territory, they figured, well, if we're actually as close as possible to where the hetman lives or the king lives, that will surely mean it will give us protection when people who would, well, predisposed to have a, some aggression towards Jewish people or just jealous because they're seeing, oh, these Jewish people are working hard and making money. Why doesn't that work for me? You know. Anywho, let's not go down that road, eh? We'd be here all day. Looking into the unjust persecution of the Jewish people over the last 2,000 years. Uh, Italians, they've got so much to answer for. Yeah. Right. Should we climb to the top of the hill, see if there's anything there? could be that there's one of those scale models up here, you know, often cast in metal, sitting on top of a sort of table, bench, worktop, mini podium thing. And then you can see the scale model and think to yourself, oh yeah, right. Oh, this is a new one. What have we got here? No black Labradors gallivanting. I'm going to interpret that as no black Labradors gallivanting, specifically. So leave your black Labrador at home if you've got one and you're thinking of coming to this site. Ooh. It's a long way up. Boy, you really do have to completely use your imagination remembering back to what we saw as we were crossing the bridge there's nothing else here to give us an insight walking close by the riverbank I saw this I thought, uh, oh, the leaves, again from a distance with my eyesight, is this a hidden stash of cannabis plants? And then I saw the berries. And I thought, hello, I got this all wrong. It's blackberries. And the closer I got, the more interested I got and thought, Ooh, I'm gonna have a feast tonight, blackberries only to find its little kind of black currant type things so i won't be picking any i won't be sampling the fruit sometimes fruit is forbidden for a very good reason i'll probably poison myself if i did sample this stuff however tempting it may look ah oh, well I've had breakfast. I can't complain. I'm not hungry. Just being greedy. And woohoo! What have we got here? Somebody's invested a bit of cash in a big collection of brown and black giant size wooden shoe boxes that they've stacked together to create. Who knows what? Looks as though it's not ready yet, whatever they're going to turn it into. 
Riverside Hotel, maybe. Got a church up on the hill over there. Okay, it's not looking synagogue though, is it? Well, I didn't exactly find the Jewish cemetery or the Holocaust Memorial, but I did discover the chocolate factory. It's not Willy Wonka's, it's Roshen's. And to mark the fact that I've eaten so much Roshen chocolate, and I was in the Roshen shop the other day, I might as well take a little selfie with the Roshen fabric. It always looks so simple on a map, doesn't it? I walked through the kind of like country lanes. Old cottages, sloping hills, broken pavements, where there are any pavements at all. And there are among all of that, a lot of new builds. People who put up lots of protective, this is my territory, metal fences, and I think one's actually cut off a path. But they've put their new houses up there, and it doesn't look as it does on the map. Am I just making excuses because I can't read a simple map? Well, I don't think so. Because I actually asked a couple of locals, and I asked a couple of policemen who were at a stationary police car, they struggled to help me as well. But they managed to pinpoint what I was looking for on the map, and basically just to tell me the easiest way is to go kind of continue on the circle, circular route you find yourself on and go going anti-clockwise go down here, go past the school, turn left at the crossing there's the, the Russian chocolate factory which is where I just was of course go left and I'm going to be going back to almost exactly the point where I turned off the main road and walked away from the river. Pavliv Yar Street, I think it was called. Let's see, shall we? Oh, it's a nice little old well here. Crank it up. Who needs piped water when you've got your own well? Yes, talk about... Life is a circle without a beginning. Nobody knows where that circle ends. Well, yeah, I've been walking around in circles and I just hope when this circle ends, I will have reached the right turn off point. I've got plenty of time on my hands. So, just enjoy the exercise. I don't like having to concede defeat, but sometimes you just have to. And a case in point is here in Venezia. Uh, according to Google Maps, up there, a little bit distant from the church, there is a plot of land and in theory it houses a Jewish Holocaust memorial. Here's the problem. In theory, on Google Maps, there are pathways you can take to get there. Each one I have tried has come up against a tall metal fence, or basically the beginning of somebody's garden and house, or the back of a religious site, such as that big church up there. With a lot of recent development, I don't know if this means that inadvertently access to the memorial site has been blocked off so people can't get to it. Also can't get to the Jewish cemetery either. It will have to remain a mystery. But if you happen to know the answer, let me know in the comments. I might be returning to Venezia for a third time in my life and then that would certainly give me one reason to come back wouldn't it
see something I didn't manage to see the first time or the second time. And from this angle, we can see the church where we were the other day, that beautiful pale blue and white church and dark blue on the domes. And that pleasure cruiser is at its station as well. Looks as though it may be just about to set off. Venezia's answer to Love Island. And there we have the Rochen Fountain spouting water. Looks like it could be spouting milk, doesn't it? But not spouting milk chocolate. Not from the fountain, anyway. If any of that's going on, probably it's going on up there in the factory. Ooh, the words Russian are spelt out on the brickwork. Isn't that nice? And if you're in need of some touristic information, I found a tourist kitchen service, a teapot. Did he say teapot? I did. A teapot. Bad indeed. Nothing's brewing. Tourist information office closed. It's a Saturday. Why on earth would they be open? Madness. Wouldn't it be madness? After all, tourists won't be showing up on a Saturday. Um, yeah. I guess they didn't think it through.